Hello YouTube, today in the hypertrophy series, we're talking eccentric versus concentric movements. This is going to be a difference that is key to understand because all of your program, all of the movements you do are going to be comprised to some level of both or just a focus on one or the other. And there's always going to be also an isometric old component for certain movements. That's just a given. But understand that depending on the ratio of each lift and the way you program them, the quality of the tonnage and the characteristics you're going to get are going to be completely different. So the, the concentric, eccentric, people also call it the positive, the negative. I personally like positive and negative better just because it's more friendly and programming is already complicated enough as is. We don't need to have super complicated terms when we can just go the easy way. So I'm just going to stick with these. So the negative is going to be the portion of the lift where your muscles lengthen. And basically what happens when they do that is they accumulate energy that then that is then released during the positive. So when the positive happens, the muscles contract. You can think of that as a spring in a sense. And certain lifts are going to start with the positive, certain lifts are going to start with the negative. The vast majority of the lifts that people use as an example of something like a shortened range of motion are usually lifts that start with the negative. Why? Because people tend to always cut a portion of the negative, it's very rare to see someone cheat on the positive. So you will have examples like a half bench, half squat, where people are going to take a portion of the negative and just don't, they just won't do it. And the reason why they won't do it is, as a, as a rule of thumb, you're always going to be weaker, in a sense, at the bottom of the negative. So when the range of motion is at its max and you cannot go any lower or deeper, which is funny and could be counterintuitive because that's also where the muscle has accumulated the most energy and is able to release it the best. The reason why you're usually weaker in those positions is because your leverage is as at its most compromised position and the structure is in a situation where it's very likely to give, meaning that that's usually when uh, form breakdown occurs. When you see someone have poor form on that type of lift, usually the the form breakdown occurs when they reverse the negative into the positive because they're not able to keep their body and the structure of it intact to be able to develop the full power of their muscles. And that's an issue in itself. But as far as lifts that don't follow that rule, you'll have, for example, the deadlift. And you'll have a lot of people who assign hypertrophy values to only lifts that start with the negative. And so the same people will tell you that positive only lifts are going to be useless for size. And the reason why they're positive only is quite easy to see. Every lift that starts with a positive, the negative is not usually not necessary. You can go through it if you want, but since it's going to be a negative that is not immediately followed by a rep and you just rest, you don't have to. So for example, the deadlift, you can do a positive and just let the bar go. That's personally what I do. The overhead press, same thing. And what is the logic behind that? Well, the logic is you are stronger on the negative, meaning that if I put you on the squat, you are going to be stronger on the pure negative. The middle ground strength is going to be usually on a full negative followed by a positive, And the lower strength is going to be on the positive only. Why? because the positive only doesn't give you the, the stretch reflex that allows you to push the bar out of the bottom. And that's a misconception that you need to keep in mind too. The values of those eccentrics, concentrics movement cannot be assigned to a, universal, uh, as, to a universal group of lifts. It changes from lift to lift and it depends on the range of motion as well. Because you'll see that a lot of people when they do positive only lift, especially when they actually tried to at the start, do something that started with a negative, like a pin squat, they'll rarely do it where the negative should have stopped. They'll do it as a partial. And that's what the video I made about partials come into play because the two come hand in hand. When you start talking about these, you have to keep in mind that the two concepts are linked. So as far as values in the program, you're going to see that most of your lifts, whether you want it or not, are going to be the ones that start with the negative and you're going to have mostly lifts that involve a negative. You shouldn't have a majority of lift, lifts that start with the positive and that don't have a negative. You can, of course, always manipulate the lifts that start with the positive to go through the negative. 
people do Romanian deadlift. That's the, basically that, which usually they start with the negative because it's a reverse logic. Uh, an overhead press would be perfectly fine on the negative. And as I said, the logic behind that is since you're stronger on the negative, shouldn't, shouldn't it be that the lifts that start with the positive then get fed into a negative that is stronger? And it's a logic that doesn't apply. Why? Because you're pre-fatigued by the positive. So on the negative, it makes sense because if you start the negative of a squat, that's why you're the strongest. So it taxes you less when you then have to reverse into the positive because if you can squat 300 pounds, what is a squat? A squat is the completed rep at the end of the positive. So what, when you do a negative with 300 pounds, you're doing a negative with less intensity than the positive because you're stronger on the negative. So by virtue of that comparison between your strength ratios, you're actually sandbagging the negative. And this is why that needs to be understood. This is why people who say deadlifts don't or strength don't get it. The beauty of the positive only lift is that this is your 100% strength on something that doesn't need a follow-up because it's already the portion of the lift that's the toughest or you're mechanically the weakest. So the, the negative that follows is going to potentially even be dangerous. This is why you shouldn't be trying to slowly put down your deadlifts for the reason I just explained because that ratio is now being inversed and you're doing the portion of the lift where you're supposed to be stronger in a fatigued state and it can potentially lead to damage of the structure. So avoid doing that. If you want to do them, modify the lift, like a Romanian deadlift, but you'll have to modify the intensity. All of that to say what? All of that to present the aspects and the characteristics of the positive and the negative, because there's going to be applications of them. And the applications are going to be uh, applied to hypertrophy. And as you program, you should have a clear idea of the percentages of lifts that are going to get negative and positive, the ones that are going to be positive only, negative only, isometric hold, because some lifts don't go through a range of motion, and yet they can still provide hypertrophy, which I will discuss in details. But until you can recognize that the program in itself is going to be mostly comprised of negative and positive, it's going to be tough to wrap your head around it. So the logic behind that too is, why do we want most lifts to have a negative and a positive? Well, because I just told you that most lifts that have a positive phase that starts the lift, that begins the lift, tend to not have a negative, which is a representation of a loss of tonnage because you accumulate much more tonnage if you get it through a negative and a positive. Even if you can lift more on a positive only lift, you'll still get much less tonnage. So by virtue of that, you want most of your lifts to be in a full range of motion, and starting with a negative, ending with a positive. Or the opposite, if you can get something with a positive and a negative. But you need the two portions. Why? Tonnage accumulation. That's the logic behind it. That's the logic behind the full range of motion thing. If this wasn't applicable to hypertrophy, you could just do partials for only a positive and that range of motion and get huge. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that for the entirety of the body. Some muscles actually respond very well to that. But for the most part, this is not the case. So I'm going to leave you with this, this basic introduction of notions that I know you already have in your head, but that I want to preface here because the applications of them can really get out there. And a lot of people have some difficulties or resistance towards certain advanced principles of concentric and eccentric movements. So it's important that I put it out there now so that I can throw people back to this video if they ask questions about my philosophy, which is full range of motion for the most part, full negative, slow negative if you can to get all the tension you can, and a fast positive, and I'm going to leave you at that in the dark. Thank you for watching.